everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And yeah, yesterday you had so many kind comments for me in regards to my holding back the link to the BitPay release. And I just want to tell you that it just wasn't me. It was more than probably 50 people in this community because I shared it not only with the zoo fam who, wow, not one of them put the uh, information out, but I also had a communication with Galgatron and I had some communication with Sam. I think what it goes to show is that there is a tremendous amount of integrity within the whole XRP community and there's a lot of respect for each other. And uh, so it's just not me that held that back because I couldn't confirm the story. It was more than 50 people in the XRP community. And, and uh, yeah, I just think I need to make that really clear that everybody works so hard to be uh, always careful for not spreading FUD and to um, provide accurate information. And uh, I think um, there is a genuine uh, thread of oneness to bring value to this community, the XRP community, in a way that doesn't um, hurt it. And that is shown by all that respect that we see on the backside. Now, it's not a perfect community. I know there's some squabbles, but for the most part, everybody is so supportive of everybody that it is uh, really uh, something special, unlike what you'll find in other communities. <laughs> and I'm speaking about Tone Vase here. Obviously, this is um, pretty funny today. I can't see Tone's tweets because he's blocked me, but he's having a funny conversation with Sam. And I just about fell out of my chair when I read this. He uh, tweeted to Tone, come on, Tone, don't make me do you like Lazy Chico. <laughs> Be man enough to stand up for what you believe in, even if it means finding out you're wrong and have to admit it to your audience. Wouldn't you rather, wouldn't you rather them find out now before the XRP ship sets sail? Yeah, I think. <laughs> I love Sam. He is relentless when it comes to handling people out there that are spreading mistruths. Okay. I will tell you that the Spring Blockchain Interoperability Hackathon just ended today. They've been at it for two days in Berkeley. If you join the Spring community uh, on, the, on Slack, uh, you can find out some of the work that they're that they're doing and see some of the conversation. It's really quite fascinating. There is also looks to be a video that after it is uh, edited, they are going to make a full video of the demos available. And according to Rennie at Spring, uh, it's going to be available in a couple of weeks. Okay, and yesterday I was talking about the investors who have contributed to the project Securitize. And when I got to this one here, I said it was Tokensoft. Well, I should have been more explicit because what I was trying to say is it's Tokensoft, the security token issuance and management platform that is officially supporting Tezos. So this is what I had meant to say. And then when we go back to looking at that article that was in the Arab Times that was uh, written by Tariq Al-Rafai, Al -Rafai, he said that uh, Ripple was being tested by Swift. And of course that created a lot of people talking and trying to um, find out exactly what his source was. And I did email him, but I have not had a response back. However, Danny on XRP chat has seemingly received a response back from that author. And he does uh, confirm that that is his, uh, story you know that he that he authored it he wrote it and also he provided a link to this financial times article uh back from 2018 so that article is this article here and it's just talking about the swift 
proof of concept that they published. And the article's pretty much empty. So when we really need to see what's going on here, we need to go to the actual final report. This is something that was started in October, no, April 2017, and then they published the results in October 2017. And it was one of the most extensive blockchain proof of concepts powered by the Hyperledger Fabric 1.0. That is hosted, of course, by the Linux Foundation. And Swift instructed that this solution would share a private confidential ledger recording transactions uh, that related to the Nostro accounts. So they wanted to use this agnostic DLT platform and support uh, through automated real-time liquidity, monitoring, and reconciliation. So the report said that the POC went extremely well, proving the fantastic progress. So if you want to go through the final report, you are most welcome to. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But also, too, there's a wonderful article that sums up the uh, analysis from Open Gov Asia. This is a really great source. They are out of Singapore and they do a wonderful job when it comes to reporting on fintech, big data, digital economy, and blockchain. If you're not following them, I suggest you do. It's one of those sources for news that is not in those aggregated news sites. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay. So the Linux Foundation, um, they, you know, are pretty much the um, body that governs over this Hyperledger project. And it's very important to understand that NTT Data, the company here in Japan, is one of the original founding members. And then Ripple later joined this. Okay, so when we take a look at who NTT Data is, well, they are a uh, technology integrator. They're huge. They are just huge. They're a communications company here. And you can see they have 110,000 professionals across the globe. They are in 51 economies, 210 cities. They are a big, big company. And um, what we need to look at is the story really begins with NTT data through its subsidiary Everest. They work together on a version of Ripple's Interledger protocol in July 2016. And the intent was to implement the Interledger using the Java computing language. So together, Ripple and NTT submitted this collaboration and it was to bridge uh, and connect all of the Hyperledger's open source code bases, Fabric, Sawtooth, and Burrow. And yeah, it became a reality. So you can see this is when they announced that Everest and NTT Data and Ripple were committing full-time engineering resources to get that project done. And then we can see this is at the actual announcement of when the Linux Foundation now hosts both the Java Quilt and the JavaScript Interledger um, implementations to the Quilt that was initially contributed by NTT Data and Ripple. And at Cybos 2017, you can see that in their session, they had an opportunity to explain to everyone about the Interledger Java project and the program, which is part of the Hyperledger Foundation. And it is, you know, through this company, Everest, which is working together with Ripple and NTT Data. At that time, at that same time they were at Cybos, they produced this PDF. This is fascinating. You can see here the money network. So you have the Bank of Japan, you have the uh, single European payments um, network. You've got ACH out of the United States. You have um, the faster payment system in the UK and also the uh, system in China. It's all going across the XRP ledger and it is integrating with various platforms, including Hyperledger Fabric here. And Corda, you can see this is a big deal because it's not just blockchain and and DLT, but capital markets like Bloomberg, trade finance like IBM and Oracle and SAP, Internet of Things being Intel, Apple, and uh, this is Tesla over here, payment platforms like Apple Pay and PayPal, Square, 
Alipay, and marketplaces like Amazon, Rock10, Alibaba, eBay, Airbnb, and other platforms including Facebook, Microsoft, Google, Netflix, Uber, etc. So this is the this is how NTT Data, which is uh, through their subsidiary company Everest, this is how they see the entire interoperability across banks, settlement networks, and platforms. So they had that objective to develop the interledger interledger Java software and this is the future according to them starting in 2020. So if we just go and take a look at the Everest website in April 2017 there's a really good quote from Stefan Thomas he of course was the CTO at that time he says that the hyperledger blockchains now connect with other ILP they are capable payment systems that can be used with uh, the uh, such as XRP Ledger and RippleNet. And you can see Interledger Protocol is being absorbed into the Hyperledger community as the Hyperledger Quilt project, and it allows access into over 230 organizations. The XRP coin, which has um, which was developed by Ripple. Uh, is creating a liquidity pool to provide cheaper and faster payments across the globe, in particular in areas where liquidity is poor and expensive, or often both. So, yeah, I think that even though the Arab Times article had the reference to that Hyperledger POC, um, I think you can really easily connect the dots to how Ripple and XRP are interwoven into that and it's not just from 2017 and 2018 this is March 2019 this is NTT data working with a bank in Europe uh, using the ripple technology that is bringing the mobile payments to some 14 million people <laughs> so they're still very active and this is still very much uh, ongoing development and this is not a proof of concept this is this is this is in production right now and also uh just to show you you know how again interwoven this this community of blockchain in the payment space is david nickel uh was joining the ntt data booth in september last month uh, at Cybos to discuss digital assets and how they can change the world of capital markets. So there's just a lot going on, everybody. A lot going on. Okay, we're jumping to the fluff. So you can imagine there's a lot of articles about so many foreigners in Japan who have come to watch the rugby, and it's not all, it's not all positive articles i have to admit the foreigners who are visiting <laughs> have not really studied japanese decorum or public manner <laughs> which is getting a lot of twitter actually it's a lot of twitter and it's yeah you know in i think there's a lot of people who are talking loud because yeah japan in in a public space japanese are very, very quiet and especially, absolutely no phones on trains. So not only keep your voice down on a train, but never, ever, ever can you get on the phone. And I think a lot of foreigners are not aware of that very strict uh, rule. And yeah, you have to carry out your own garbage in Japan. This is one of the cleanest cities you'll find anywhere in the world, even though it has 14 million people living in the core, um, you do have to take out your own garbage. There's not a lot of garbage cans. And uh, no, no, no smoking on the streets. This is just strictly observed in <laughs> Japan. And unfortunately, not everybody, even though they know the rules, this is somebody who was quoted in this article, Mark Clifford, an Australian who's 48, he says, I smoke in the streets. 
I'm watching the game. He was watching the game at a Tokyo pub. Uh, it's the World Cup, he says. There are a lot of foreigners, so they have to be tolerant. Huh? <laughs> say, say what? <laughs> Especially if they want us to have a good image of their country. Oh my gosh. I can tell you, Mr. Mark Clifford, you are a guest in this country and no, you should be minding your manners. And I guess maybe you're the one that is having a good image problem. Oh, this kind of made me a little mad, right? <laughs> you can see that. So I'm going to introduce you to a manner here in Japan that is, is important and it's an kind of an unwritten manner, but it is a manner everybody adheres to, and it is about elevators. Now, if you're lucky, you're going to encounter in one of the big department stores uh, a woman, usually a woman, usually a woman, maybe sometimes a man, who is your lift operator. But if you are in one of the elevators, the what, 660,000 elevators. The elevators, by the way, in Japan are amazing. And I have a link to a Japanology show that I will put in the comments section below because the elevators are truly the best in the world here. But anyway, if you're one that is not operated by a lift operator, then if you are the first one in, you are the captain. And that means you have to stand close to the panel and use the, the buttons to hold the door open until everybody gets out and you exit last. Even if the door stops on the way up or the way down, same, you control. As the captain of that elevator, you control the buttons and make sure that everybody is in and out safely and operate that, uh, open door, closed door option. Okay, so I am going to just show something really quick here. This is the um, show on the elevators in Japan, and they really are quite something, but here you can just watch something really, really quick. This is a major department store, which opened its doors in 1933. Uniformed women still usher shoppers into and out of each lift, just as they did nearly 80 years ago. The lift girls operate the lifts using a hand-cranked control lever to make the lift go up or down. Ensuring that the doors open and close safely is an important part of the job. They even make very elegant announcements. Look at that Art Deco design. It's really beautiful. Anyway, this is another treat when you come to Japan. If you visit the large department stores, you can experience this kind of hospitality and service in an elevator. But remember, remember your manners. If you get in the elevator first, you become the captain. Okay, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.